When it comes to bushfire design, you'll find a lot of acronyms, weird letters that mean certain things, and asset protection zone or APZ may be something that's come up for you. What does it actually mean and why do you need to know about it? Well, we're about to learn about that in this video. This video is part of our Rebuild and Build Better series, so be sure to like the video, subscribe to Undercover Architects' YouTube channel, and hit the bell so that you're always notified when a new video is published. Your asset protection zone or your APZ can actually be a critical part of the solution that you create holistically to help your property be more bushfire resilient and be able to manage an oncoming bushfire more effectively. We're going to learn in this video about what to know about your asset protection zone and why it is so important to know about it when you're designing, building and renovating your home. Hello, I'm Amelia Lee from Undercover Architect and I help and teach homeowners how to get it right when designing, building and renovating their family homes. In this video, I speak with Jeff Dow from Ember Bushfire Consulting. Ember Bushfire Consulting are a team of qualified accredited professionals in the fire industry and Jeff himself as co-founder has over 28 years experience as a professional in the fire industry. He shares a huge wealth of, of knowledge and information when it comes to understanding the impacts that a bushfire overlay can have on your property and how you need to navigate building and renovating in one of these types of areas. Can you just take a moment to talk through sort of that asset protection zone in a bit more sure. detail? And also, you know, is this as simple as somebody going, well, fine, I'll just clear, you know, a hundred metre diameter around my property and fell all my trees and, yeah. and fix it like that? You know, how yeah. do these kinds of things come into play in terms of solutions, I suppose, to um, these challenges? Yeah, and I'll, I'll pick up that point. I guess uh, that, again, very much is the domain of the bushfire practitioner. The very simple um, uh, structure that's, you know, on a, a nice open grassland setting, very easy for the, you know, uh, or relatively easy for the homeowner to come up with um, a, a bell rating or for council. These more complex um, uh, topographies, vegetation types, settings where, you know, maybe the, the house is a kilometre or two kilometres in on a one-way in, one-way out. Then, then RFS is certainly looking at um, not just a you know bow rating but extended APZ. So it's a very complex sort of solution to to the problem. So I'll just add that point there that um, it would be nice if they were all simple, um, but they are, can quite often be complex. So if the um, the bow rating is reflective of um, you know the, the setback to the the unmanaged vegetation, the APZ, the asset protection zone, is the landscape, is the garden, is the the setback between the the building face and that line, that defined line of unmanaged vegetation, um, that that gives us the bow rating. So the two are totally complement uh, complementary. They have to work together, um, and and obviously as we we push those back. Um, it's it's not also uh, it doesn't necessarily uh, need to be an exercise in clear felling everything around there. Again, we're trying to get balance. In fact, some vegetation, if it's clumped, um, is is really good. It's a good thing. It's a, a radiant heat shield. It uh, catches embers. And then obviously, then we get into landscape design of different species, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Anyway, uh, staying to the point, the ape acid protection is this this magical area. Um, that 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 la, um, that stands between the the, the property, the structure, uh, and the unmanaged vegetation. That could still be grassland, or it could be woodland, or it could be forest. It's this very defined area, and it's it's an uh, an area of, um, of again very specific and ongoing landscape uh, management and maintenance. And that, that's the beauty of it, I think, is with with the NAPZ, you go right. I've got 20 metres, I'm doing everything within that 20 metres, I'm going to worry much less about what's happening beyond there um, and I'm just going to focus on this, this very this specific space and then the, 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 the level of construction is going to complement that. Uh, just going back quickly, the, um, the asset protection zone is probably the number one. Construction is obviously very important here. But uh, in, in all the research is that the APZ is the primary. The further you can get set, set back or the more well-managed you can have this space, the lot more likelihood um, that you're going to have um, uh, success in, in, in structure survival. And often you, you'll see after these big events, you'll see the classic photo of a, a house that's withstood, a, uh, you know, withstood a, a significant fire and it's burnt all around, but then you've got this cleared space. So that's what an a asset protection zone is. Um, and I guess, you know, we, we choose to live in the, the bushland setting um, and to clear fill it for, for 100 metres. So in, in theory, if you dig, you know, um, 
clear fell out or if you, you managed out to 100 metres and achieved a very low bow rating, that's kind of not the, that's not balanced for me. It, it's, you know, it's to keeping it, it's getting, you know, up the construction and then, you know, limit the amount of uh, damage that you have. And, and I think the other practical part of that is that if you tried, then you've established your 100 metre asset protection zone, you've gone overboard, but then you've got to maintain that 100 metres to the north, to the south, to the east, to the west. So it, it's not really a practical solution. It sounds good. It's going to save you some money, but it's it's going to... You'll be spending your weekends live, on a ride on. Ed- <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Uh, I hope that's answered the question. That's the, that's the relationship there. But very important. I think it's it's people get lost in that idea of the, oh, it's an APZ, and, but it, it's really, really important. And it, it, it complements, it works in unison um, with whatever the construction is. You've, you've adopted your BAL 29, your BAL 19, the two have to work together. As soon as your APZ deteriorates, then that, that bow rating doesn't really mean much anymore. So very important and it's it's ongoing. Yeah, no, I think it's it, for me it's really demonstrating how essential this the expertise of this type of consultant or practitioner is to you creating a holistic solution for yeah. a property that has this kind of overlay on it because what it gives you the opportunity to do is think about the totality of your site and not just yes. think about, yes. you know, okay, let's build this house as a, as a fireproof bunker that, um, yeah. you know, and just accept the fact that fire is going to rage towards us and that's just what is going to happen. Um, mm. But instead, let's think about how do we manage the whole environment of where we live so that we can build resiliency around and and our ability to protect at a distance as well um so that yeah we've got we've got those things working in combination together and i think to get that expertise as part of your design solution becomes really powerful then in you also then becoming the custodian of that in your property you know over time living in it so you understand then okay this is how should we be threatened by fire, we can expect it to perform and this is what we've done to safeguard our home and our land against it and this is what we've done and we know and we can – I mean, it was really fascinating for me when we were – um, when we had fires nearby and you just saw the community rally together, signs going out the front to say, yep, there's a pool here with static water supply, you know, all of these kinds yeah. of things yeah. that you see the importance of a community response to protecting a community. And I yeah. think that when there's this approach to – understanding that asset protection zone and you can imagine a whole string of properties doing that together just yeah. what a difference that makes to the RFS's yeah. ability to fight fire in your region for you to protect your property you know I just think that yeah it just yeah to me it just that level of expertise in your design process seems essential to me so yeah, yeah. And, and if I can if I can add to that as well and that the, the flow on there as well is that if you've got this really well maintained asset protection zone, then it's inviting the RFS, you know, if, if you don't happen to be there. And obviously we would always advocate that the leave early. That is always the best option. But if you've done these things, then you've, you've you really set your, your, your structure, your, your home very well up for, for um, survival. But it also invites the RFS to have a go because if you didn't have these really good asset protection zones, you had veg close up to the, to the structure, they'll do a triage of it and say, we're not going in, it's game over. So uh, by doing that thing, there's a whole bunch of knock-on effects, really positive uh, knock-on effects. So, yeah. Yeah, that's fantastic, Jeff. Did you find that helpful? I so hope that you did. Make sure that you check out the description below. We've got lots of extra information to help and support you as you build or renovate your home. There's also a full transcript available of this interview and the link is in the descriptions below. Now, be sure to like the video, subscribe to Undercover Architects' YouTube channel and hit the bell so that you're notified every time a new video is published. And you can be sure to check out these videos as well because we've got lots of extra information to share with you that's gonna be super helpful. As always, thank you for tuning in and for letting me be your secret ally. Until next time, bye.